Hey, it's Seth from Citizens Disability. Today, I'm going to tell you what you need to know about applying for Social Security Disability Insurance Benefits in the Constitution State, home of the Blue Point Oyster, Connecticut. Every state's different. That's obvious. Everyone knows that. But what most folks don't know is that this applies to SSDI, or Social Security Disability Insurance Claims, as well. Because of the way the Social Security Administration structures this process, the state you live in has a real effect on an applicant's waiting times and their likelihood of winning their benefits at each step of the process. Now, we track this data pretty closely. We've updated our numbers as we do every year in February, so this Connecticut data is certified fresh for 2021. And as you may know from watching some of our other videos, there's plenty of them, there's basically three steps in the SSDI application process. There's the initial application, reconsideration, and the hearing. Those first two steps, the initial application and reconsideration, are handled at the state level. They're run by state-run disability determination services who work on behalf of the Social Security Administration and who follow all their rules and regulations. As you can see on this chart coming in from the right, over the past year in Connecticut, about 40.5% of initial applications for SSDI benefits were approved. You can see how that compares to the national average of 38.4%. It's a difference of 2% to the good side. You can also see how Connecticut has done over the years going back to 2010. And as we can see here, although Connecticut was trailing that national average for a bit, then they were tracking it closely for a couple of years. Now they've crossed over, recently passed it, and they're up by those two points we mentioned. As we made this video in February 2021, Connecticut ranks 22nd in the nation in terms of the rate of approvals at the initial level. Sounds good, but still about 6 out of 10 people are having their initial applications denied in Connecticut. Now, if those numbers make you a little worried, thinking about your own potential claim, yeah, it's understandable, but there's no reason to panic. First reason not to panic is that there's people like us here at Citizens Disability, specialized disability advocates who can help with the application process to improve a claimant's chances of success. And if you want to see how an advocate could help your claim, click the little banner up here in the top right. You can watch a video all about it. The second reason not to panic is that being denied an initial application does not have to be the end of the road. There's more you can do. Most people, when they get denied at the initial application level, well, typically at least, they will appeal that denial. They'll ask for reconsideration, or as we call it, recon. That's handled at the state level as well. This chart will show you it's actually pretty rare for people to get approved at reconsideration. The data for both Connecticut and the nation reflect that. Connecticut's got an approval rate of 17.7%, which is a decent bit ahead of that national average of 13.7%, but still pretty low. You can see how Connecticut has done over the last 10 years as well. They've been fairly ahead of that national average for about the past seven years. Overall, in 2021 so far, Connecticut ranks ninth in the nation in terms of approval at reconsideration. Not too shabby, but still, like the majority of people in the United States, in Connecticut, most people who apply for SSDI are going to have to go to that third stage of the process called the hearing. Now, we got a ton of information about the hearing on our website and videos here on YouTube all about the process if you want to get the details. You can even see what a hearing is actually like. Again, just check this video up in the top right. Short version, if you've been denied at reconsideration, you appeal that denial and you go to a hearing in front of an administrative law judge who works for the Social Security Administration at the federal level. This is another area where all the states are very, very different. Most states have at least one, but usually several, SSA hearing locations throughout the state. And each individual office has their own waiting times and their own approval rates. In this chart, coming in now, you can see how Connecticut fares on average across their, all their offices against that national average for approval rate at hearing. It looks like through 2020 and into 2021 so far, Connecticut's coming in at 44% on average, compared to the national average of 51.1%. This puts Connecticut ranked at 37th in the nation. Now, when you appeal and you ask for that hearing, it can actually take a pretty long time for that hearing to come around and actually happen. 
No surprises. We got a video all about that too. You can see the banner up top. When it comes to hearing wait times for Connecticut, you can see them here in the blue bars. We have a national average of 11.4 months of waiting time before the hearing. And we can see that across the state for Connecticut, the average is 10.7 months, a little bit better. As you can see, obviously, there's more than one hearing location in Connecticut. You can see that both of the offices in Connecticut have the same hearing wait time of 10.7 months. Connecticut is currently a little better than the national average, but still pretty close. You can also see that each office has its own approval rates. Those are the red bars. In looking at the 2020 data leading into 2021, we can see that the better situation is in Hartford with an approval rate of 45.8%. We can see that New Haven isn't quite as strong with a rate of 42%. And currently, Connecticut is still trailing the national average because both of those offices are below. With all the data, we can see that for approval rates at hearing, on average, Connecticut ranks 37th in the nation, as we said, while for waiting times, Connecticut's doing pretty good at 16th in the nation. The important thing to remember here, though, is that these waiting times that we're talking about for Connecticut and for these individual offices, those are average waiting times. Some folks may get their hearings quicker than those average numbers, but some people are going to have to wait longer, sometimes even a lot longer than those average numbers. Now, we got a lot more data about Connecticut at our website, www.citizensdisability.com. You can check it out by visiting us. Click on our state by state page and click into your state. We update our data every year so you can stay current on what's happening and have up to date information at your fingertips. Now, if you're thinking about applying for SSDI benefits, no matter where you are in the country, we strongly encourage you to get help from a disability advocate, you know, like us here at Citizens Disability or a local specialist attorney. Especially after looking at these approval rate numbers that we've shown you, I think you want to have the best possible chance at getting approved, and that's what an advocate can do for you. At Citizens Disability, we've been helping regular folks all across America apply for and win their SSDI benefits, and we've been doing it for over a decade. No advocacy group is more aggressive than we are, and no one handles more cases per year than we do. Now, if you'd like to see if we can help you, just visit us. Again, it's www.citizensdisability.com, or you can call us at the number on the screen. Thanks for watching our video about applying for SSDI benefits in the Constitution State, Connecticut. If you liked what you saw here and you want to see more, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button down there and ring the bell so you can get a notification when we publish more videos. Also, please feel free to leave us a comment down there in the comment section. Tell us what you think. We've got a ton of content on the SSDI process, how it all works and how we can help you. So please feel free to explore both our website and here on YouTube. I hope I see you again soon for another video. Until then, I'll just say thanks for watching. And of course, have a great day.